Pharmacy Technical Services, one of the organization's hidden teams, working behind the scenes to prepare and deliver the drugs needed by some of our poorliest patients. The team worked from the Technical Services Building at the back of the Royal Coma Hospital site. And on this occasion, they've received an order for a chemotherapy drug for a patient on the Headland unit. Okay, so what will happen is once Emma Nichols and one of the clinical oncology pharmacists have checked a prescription, it gets sent through to the order issue cyto desk. Um, and Tracy over there will print out the prescription. She will then print out a worksheet and labels. She'll then assemble the raw ingredients um, in a tray, do the calculations, and then send it in to be made inside there. And that'll get pre-checked inside there by a pharmacist or a technician, and then go into the sterile rooms to be made. Working in a clean environment, both technicians and pharmacists are required to change into clean room clothing to minimise the risk of contamination before entering the room. These will get sent in from order issue and uh, we will then batch up the, uh, the bags and any relevant vials or diluents and uh, put the equipment uh, appropriate for manufacture. So uh, we have to uh, record the batch numbers of the bags and the, and the drugs um, just so we've got, I guess, everything sort of um, that could be checked by the pharmacist, things like expiry dates are covered. Uh, if there's any recall, we've got particular batch numbers that need uh, recalling or any issues with them, you know, we can trace that all back. So everything's kind of accounted for, everything that we've used, everything's booked out correctly. Um, so I'll get all this ready, I'll show up and the pharmacist will check that. From the moment a drug is prescribed, the team aim to assemble the components and formulate the drug ready to be given to the patient within two hours. There are some that, once they're in the isolator, don't, don't take very long to draw up and um, sort of pop in the bag. Uh, and then we get others, uh, like you're probably going to see, that will have a lot of reconstitution elements to them. Um, got to, you know, wait for the drug to sort of settle. And then um, it'll take a little while before we can draw it up and, you know, put it in whatever kind of bag we've got at the moment that needs to go into. So, yeah, it's, um, the two-hour turnaround exists. Mm. It doesn't always take two hours, but it absolutely can do. Again, it depends on the workload we've got. Um, so. If we get something put through, we've got a load of urgent uh, things ahead of it, um, you know, it can get delayed in that way as well. To reduce the risk of contamination, the team operate a rigorous cleaning process. Everything that is going into that room, everything is individually wiped with spore side wipes, um, which that helps kill any spore producing, um, any spore producing bacteria. Um, and then that is all left for two minutes while it's doing its thing. And then each, again, each individual item is then uh, sprayed with 70% um, denatured uh, alcohol spray. Um, and then that is placed into the transfer hatches. We've got in, in, ha uh, in hatch and an out hatch. And that is then again another two minutes for the alcohol to do its thing. And then they can then bring it through on their side into the more cleaner environment. Before entering the cyto dispensing room, an additional layer of PPE is carefully donned to achieve near complete coverage. So it's a, a similar process to outside, where we've got sporocided and then um, alcohol sprayed. Uh, we go through the same wiping and spraying process in here, uh, except for rather than sporocide, um, we use uh, denatured um, alcohol top wipes. So the same uh, sort of stuff that's in the sprays, just to remove any traces of uh, sporocide, which should hopefully have been removed by this point and then we spray it again to make sure there's no 0% chance of uh, contamination again. So each right item gets its own individual wipe so that we're not just transferring um, sporocide or any kind of bacteria from one item to another. So this is uh, one of our isolators. Um, when the tray's been wiped and sprayed, everything's been wiped and sprayed now, we will open this uh, inner, inner hatch and uh, we'll give the base wipe with alcohol wipe to make sure there's no contamination on the base. Uh, we'll pop the tray in there. Uh, there'll be a two minute countdown. After that, we're able to sort of uh, bring it into the center of the isolated work zone, um, on which we uh, might want to see. We have a chemo mat. So, this is to uh, absorb or contain uh, any spills we may have. Um, you know, if a, a product is, uh, if we have a drip or anything, uh, that lands on the mat and not the base of the isolator, contains it. It means we can sort of uh, deal with, you know, um, any spills or drips of cytotoxic drugs uh, safely. This is, uh, you will see, hopefully, uh, two settle plates that sort of sat just at the back there, and they're sort of there as a sort of for a monitoring purpose. So um, they are out for the duration of our um, 
uh, session and they're there to catch uh, anything that may be floating around the isolator that our QA department can then go pop them in an incubator and find out if we have any contaminants in the, in the isolator. Uh, and if there are found to be any, we can then uh, follow the appropriate cleaning procedure to you know, remove any contaminants. So I spray my hands. Yeah. Make sure that everything's nice and clean. Before we do anything else, we uh, just wipe the tops of the vials with a little alcohol wipe, that's what this thing is. Uh, we can wipe two items with each wipe, so one and then the other. So now we're at a stage where we can start to draw up what we need. Um, so I'm going to be reconstituting these two vials here with uh, sodium chloride from this bag over here. And I'm just going to unclamp that. And the worksheet's saying that I need 20 mils. And now that I've got my uh, fluids drawn up, I then ask for a check before they go into the vials. Dave, could I have a check, please? We've got 20 mils and 20 mils, yep. 20 mils, happy with that. Throughout the entire process, checks and double checks are made by technicians and pharmacists to ensure drugs and volumes correctly match those listed on the worksheets. Once again, just get rid of all my waste bits so that they're not in my way and I'm not potentially contaminating anything while I'm doing it. Unsheath the needle and put it in the needle block and then go at an angle so not to cool the bun. And because this is a very uh, sensitive drug, we're just gonna inject it very, very slowly so that it doesn't agitate it too much. Draw up a bit of air so that we're not overpressurizing the vial. Otherwise that can cause aerosols and that means a lot of cleaning. Extract the needle. Use the needle block without touching it so we're not at risk of stabbing ourselves. And then dispose of the syringe and the needle in the sharp spin. Just give this a uh, swirl around. Just make sure that everything is suspended in the solution so that it can dissolve. And then we can move on to the next vial. In the isolator on the other side of the room, a technician is formulating a cytotoxic drug for another patient. Anyway, it's just to remove any chance of tracing a cytotoxic drug. And there's just a case of mixing the bag. Um, depends on what drug we're doing as well as to how vigorously, vigorously you can mix it. But, you know, general is usually encouraged just so we don't uh, upset the drug. But it needs to be thoroughly mixed so we don't get any sort of stuff in the port. Uh, in the event that we did have some in there, you know, the patient would get a, a slightly stronger dose than um, than we need them to, so we need it thoroughly mixed so that everything's sort of uniform through. So this is the worksheet we've just done. Uh, I'm going to pop that there. And then what I have since done is, prior to the start of manufacture, I've written down the, you don't have to read that, but I've written down the uh, starting pressures and the airflow in the work zone. So I'll just take the same readings after we finish the product as well. Because we've been in an environment where we've had a, a lot of sprays sort of knocking around, it's always necessary to just dry off the bag to make sure there's nothing sort of on the outside of it. Helps the label stick on, but also it means that when we send it out, if everything's dry, um, we know that there's been no sort of leakage, whereas if we send out um, you know, a damp bag or a damp tray, there's nothing to tell the guys outside that we haven't had a leak of some sort, and obviously it's uh, very sort of uh, dangerous chemicals a lot of the times. As far as information we need is uh, we record who the product was made by, who's checked it, so and then we've got isolator readings, so uh, pressure readings uh, before and after we finished. And prior to manufacture, we check that the gloves and sleeves are okay. And afterwards, we've also checked that the gloves and sleeves are okay. So the last thing I'll do is I'll just check all the information on the label uh, to ensure that um, everything matches up with the worksheet, uh, to make sure that the patient, the patient is right, the drug's right, the dose is right, everything like that. So I know these have been checked by the pharmacist prior to coming in, but we'll again check them in here just to make sure, just in case something slips through. Yeah, and that's got its labels on. So I've got the remaining labels which we used outside with it, and the worksheet. It's all filled in. Filled in. Okay.
So when the trays are finished being pr produced in the in our sighted dispensing room, then we'll take them out and they'll move over to the releasing side of the bench. Here, there's a designated space for just releasing on the chemo only, and these uh, and the pharmacist or pharmacists in this. Uh, in this case, we'll um, be going through everything again, all the patient details, whether there's, um, they'll do visual checks on the products for particles in the bag. So everything needs to be as safe as possible uh, before the treatment does actually go down to the patient. So this is what they're looking out for. So they'll do all their checks. And once they're happy, they'll then send them out, um, out of the clean room, and then the transport drivers will take to the respective, to the respective place. Back in the order issue room, the transport driver will collect and check off the treatments they're transporting to the wards before loading into their van. When they arrive on site, the drugs are checked off against the patient and are either placed in the fridge or room temperature storage. Chemotherapy drugs are stored in Headland in dedicated fridge and cupboard spaces which are only used for that purpose. The fridges and room temperature items undergo extensive monitoring of their temperature conditions so that we can assure that the quality and stability of the drugs is suitable for administration to our patients. When the patient is ready to receive their treatment, a member of the team from the ward will collect the patient's drug. We come into the treatment room where all the treatment is stocked. We check against the patient lists to see if their treatment has been dropped off by technical pharmacy and whether it's in the fridge or in the room temperature cupboard. If it's in the fridge, we take a clean tray. Collect the patient treatment at all times wearing our protective gloves. Then we're ready to take it to the patient's bedside where we do the checks. Checks are made again with the patient to ensure the team are treating the right patient with the correct drug. Then as the two nurses, we're just gonna check the patient blood results, which were done two days ago, so they're within date, and we're looking at them, and to us, they're all within parameters. Chemistry is all correct, all good. We then just check the patient notes again to make sure there's no notes that we need to take note of before we put it up. Everything is fine. There's a note from the doctor saying, go ahead. So we go back to the prescription. Yes. And then I read out what I have got and Audrey will check it against me. So all the time we have to handle the drug, we're wearing our protective gloves. And we connect it in the tray so there's no chance of spillage. And now I have to take my gloves off so I don't contaminate the pump. Confirm that it's all correct, make sure everything is unclamped, that it's connected. We hit green for go. Confirm that it's working, which it is, and that's done. One hour. Thank you. <laughs> this is a continuous process for the team in technical services who work to deliver treatments for patients as efficiently and safely as possible.